It's Jebro, we're doing a, a Necro Reaper build today, and it's going to be talking a little bit about, you know, we've seen in PvP, we're seeing Necros play, you know, Signets and Might Stacking builds, and this is just maybe my own variation of it, uh, different options you can have, and just what I've been playing in PvP and how it's been fun for me, so I thought I'd just do a build about it, because there's not really many out there, um, and it's just very basic, so hopefully I'm going to do some gameplay in the future. There's possibilities. I've been running uh, with Dagger, actually, rather than just Scepter. So we're going to go through the weapons first, and we'll talk about everything else. So we've got Dagger with Offhand Warhorn, of course. We do get the Swiftness, and we also get the Cripple. And then we get, obviously, Wall of Doom, which is a nice daze. So it's a nice interrupt as well. So you can maybe get some of your other abilities off, maybe disengage to a degree. And try and interrupt some big abilities that might be coming out from players and you spot their animation and you think, okay, I might be able to interrupt that. Or I might want it days so I can maybe go into uh, Reaper Shroud and pull up uh, quite a few condition damage uh, ticks as, and whatnot as well. Also, you know, that might be nice in combination with Chill to the Bone, but there's some options you know you can have your dagger which obviously you know you can increase your life force so you can get into Reaper Shroud a lot quicker. Um, Oh, you can go for uh, Scepter as well because you're going to get a ton of extra conditions, you know, bleeding as well as torment coming out, and also, you know, the bleeding and poison that come from the first skill. So, really, this is up to you. Um, I like the dagger just because I can do, you know, on the third skill, we've got that immobilized, which is quite, some, quite nice for three seconds. I can put them in place um, and I know where they're going to be, so I can damage them. It forces them to use some kind of, you know, removal to get rid of that. Um, I like the Siphon Health because it helps me survive and also I just like the amount of damage that comes with this um, Necrotic Bite as well. So let's just show you how much damage you can do with a dagger with no might or anything and how much might actually builds up over time in this weapon set as well. Because I've got, you know, some of strength there on him at the moment and I gain might when there's chill on him. So at the moment, just by pressing 1, I managed to gain about 20 stacks of might. And uh, so that was pretty strong, pretty powerful. Whether or not you need to use, you know, Sigil of Strength is a big part of that as well, of course. Um, be, able to be able to see the reason, other reason why in the traits when I go through those. So I've got Strength and I've also got Sigil of Blood on that set. I do have the Staff as well. And then I have the Sigil of Ice, so 30% on crit, on, sorry, on hit to inflict chill for two seconds. And then we've got the Energy Sigil so we get our dodge back. That's for extra survival, of course. So let's just press 1 a few times and you can see exactly how much maybe I get um, some chill on the hit. doesn't happen too much, really, unfortunately, with the stuff. So maybe, you know, maybe that might not be the best idea for you. Of course, when I'm filming the video, there's of course going to be an issue that the chill doesn't come up. You can see it's an extra nice little and then the chill comes off even more, we're able to get more might stacks you can see at the moment. And by the time he's dead, um, we've actually got 22, 23, 24, ah, almost. We've got 24 stacks of might just from pressing one. So you can see how powerful you know that kind of combination is. And you'll see it in the traits as well when we go through those in a moment. Staff skills, of course, you know, you can get the chill and the poison on the third skill. Second skill is bleeding as well as being able to regenerate. And also then we've got the fourth skill, which is very, very useful for your condition removal. So, you want to try and hold on to that for as much long as possible. On my previous videos, when I've played Necro, I failed with my cooldowns because I kind of panicked a bit because Necro was always, I was always getting a bit owned. So I've got a lot better in playing Necro as well, actually, with just, even with uh, some pointers from kind of Nos when he went over one of my build videos and maybe kind of slated it a little bit, but I don't care because I learned a lot from it and I've actually improved a lot as a player, so that's quite good. He was nice. He was nice about it, to be honest. He did give me some nice criticism, which I took and, uh, you know, he meant it in a nice way and I appreciate that, so that's very cool. Um, of course, you know, some of your big survival skills and also damage as well is Plague Signet. So when you have a lot of conditions on you, you want to transfer your conditions to your foe. Um, the passive, of course, is just conditions uh, coming from your nearby allies to yourself. But that is a lot of damage you can potentially bring out, especially if you've got you know, a lot of stacks of burning and whatnot. Obviously, you get three stacks as might as well. Um, Signet of Locust is 25% extra run speed. 
and then you get the steel health from nearby foes as well on the activate so it's get, good to get your nice little bit of healing there and then you've got the synchronous you know, vampirism of course when you heal when struck on the passive and then you heal yourself and mark a foe ally players will siphon life from that enemy so you've obviously got when in team fights that's pretty good as well even good 1v1 to make sure you got some sustain and then of course you have the extra might free stacks coming from all of these sickness as well we've got spectral armor um you've got decisions to make really with this you could go for spectral armor i mean i like spectral armor 50 second cooldown which is quite a long time um you could go for also summon flesh worm which is a much lower cooldown and obviously you know that's going to help you a lot to get out of sticky situations such as uh, dragon hunter traps and whatnot so you know you've got the option between that really and i feel like you've got the option between the spectral armor as well i mean you could go for spectral walk but the cooldown is massive um there's some different options really that's up to you but there's different reasons for why you could use uh, quite a few of those utilities but otherwise the signets they're pretty much fixed I feel like the shout is really really good obviously you put chilled on your foe for seven and a quarter seconds so let's put chill on our foe for seven and a quarter seconds turns into a block of ice as well you just press one you can see what's going on with the might stacking and we can probably get it even quicker if we press two but we've got 20 stacks of might there as well while we was pretty much chilled for most of that time so it's pretty good, obviously. <laughs> um, having them frozen in ice as well is pretty bloody useful for that stun. Uh, and it's AoE, so it's really, really good, not only for trying to get down so they can't get their res back up, and or actually for trying to res yourself. I've used this in so many nice defensive supportive situations. It's got a lot of utility to it, so I feel like that's pretty nice. Um, Plague, obviously, could be used very, very tanky. Uh, Lich form, not so much. Um, you can run some flesh. Run. Really, it's up to you. I feel like that is the best and the strongest one for me, as personally in my, in my, just the way I like to play and what I want to have fun with. Um, obviously, we're going we're going celestial at the moment because. You know, we get some extra toughness, we get some vitality, we get a bit of everything. And when I run carrion, I'm not as good as the other necros who might be able to, might feel as if they can survive a lot better and do a lot more damage in the full condi. Um, I mean, look, I don't feel like I can. So Celestial is really helping me, which is why we still, you know, with the might stacking, it's, we still do a lot of damage over time. So Celestial is really helping me to sustain myself a lot more. And then we've got Rune of Strength. We don't need to go for Holbrack. We're focusing on might duration here. So, you know, extra might duration and extra damage while people are under effect of might, of course, as well. And when we get hit, we've got a chance of getting might stacked as well. So that's pretty much that. We are going to go through the traits. This is not going to be a long video like some of my other recent ones because it's not too difficult of a build. Um, so we're going to go Soul Reaping Spite and we're also going to go Reaper. So Gluttony, increased life force gain from skills, obvious. Uh, soul Marks, Marks generate life force when triggered. Marks are unblockable. We need the life force, of course, to go into our Reaper Shroud. And then we've got Last Grass, so Spectral Armor, gain this. Um, at the health threshold of 50%, good for our defense. Vital persistence, life force drain slower while in death shroud. Shroud skills recharge faster. Very, very good because we have a lot of usage from our death shroud. Reaper shroud, sorry, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Strength of undeath, you do more damage while above the life force threshold. Maximum life force increased. So life force uh, threshold is 50% there. So you obviously we can do a lot more damage when we're higher in the bar and then we are going to go to doomfire which has not been a long time since it's been really used a lot more in higher tier pvp obviously burning does a lot of damage and the shroud skill one inflects burning on your on your target so if we want to get focus on a bit more on conditions i mean we could go for foot in the grave we gain stability or we could go for increased critical chance while in death shroud these two are totally possible with my stacking um Doing fire though, you get a lot of burning. So let's just have a look how much burning we actually get. One, four, five, one K. It's about one K burning, you know. First skill does a lot of damage in itself. So we got to 1.2, 1.3 K burning. So not bad. Should have timed that really, that would have been a bit better. Um let's go into death perception. Our crit's gone up a bit as well. And we'll just wait for all that to come back up. 
we could do a nice amount of damage just on our hits as well. So you can really you can see a difference in damage there. You can see the might stacks going up. We've got chill and then we can get some more might stacks. You might argue that maybe there's more damage in that, but it's nice to have the extra burning because it's really an extra nice condition to add to to it. So, you know, depending on whether or not you want to get more power with the increased crit there or with the with the burning, it's really up to you. I'm just gonna keep hitting it because now I'm thinking, hmm. I wonder. I just like the dot damage too much on this. You still get one or two K hits sometimes. You can see that burst that comes out sometimes as well. The chill and also the burning. It's really, really nice condi burst that they might not be expecting. Um, okay, so let's go back into spite here. So Shroud skill grants might. There we go. Grounding might on our first skill. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. The depth. That's for free. Consume conditions to gain health when you strike a foe below the health threshold. So that's 25%. One condition removed. Inflict vulnerability when you strike a foe below the health threshold. Deal more damage while downed. That's always nice when you're down fight and you're kind of screwed. Um, you could go here for bitter chill because we've got more sustain through celestial. So you can go for one of these two. Um, because you're chilling a lot, so you're going to increase a lot. Of, you're going to put a lot of vulnerability stacking on them as well. So, really, it's up to you. Again, I'm using this more for my own kind of survival, I suppose. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm using that. Uh, Death's embrace to inflict vulnerability when you strike a foe below the health threshold. More vulnerability stacking. So I feel like you know you're getting a lot of vulnerability anyway. Then uh, chill of death, so cost spinal shifters on foe when attacking them from their help, um, attacking them while their health is below the threshold. So you get the chill off, obviously, and you remove free boons, which is always very, very useful because it's going to help you to do extra damage and extra sustain on your target. Um, you don't have an axe, and obviously more vulnerability. Yeah, you could again, but it feels like we're already stacking a fair bit anyway. So this adept here, gain might when you strike a foe below the health threshold, so we're gaining might again. So this is obviously why we want to be going for these might stacking, and then we get the might through the signets as well, and that free that is going to be free stacks. There you have increased damage to enemies below the health threshold and close to death, and then you have unholy feast as well when entering death trap. Really think obviously if you want them to stack might, then you should be going for this, and if you are running signets as well, it makes complete sense. Um, even if you were running this line and you weren't running, you know, you would, didn't, your whole overall goal was to stack might is still pretty useful, you know, if you're using signals. So finally, we're going to go to Reaper. And Death Shroud is replaced with Reaper Shroud with more melee orientated skills. We know that. So Chilling Nova. This is really where we're focusing on our chill and da chill doing damage. Critical hits against chilled foes that cause an explosion that chills adjacent foes. So we can do AoE chill on five targets. Whenever you inflict fear, you also chill. <gasps> really? Okay, so that's fear. That's the chill. Pretty good, right? You can do some nice damage on that. Um, and then obviously on your Reaper Shroud, if you press your third skill and then you press it again, you're able to get the chill and the fear as well. But the chill should last longer. Okay, so let's go on to the next skill as well. Uh, da -da -da -da. Striking chill foe. Advanced Might and Life Force. Pretty bloody good. I got confused there and I thought I'd already gone through that. Sometimes that happens. That's what happens when you get old, you see. Um, <laughs> striking Chill Foe uh, grants Might and Life Force. There you go. That's very, very useful. Single attacks can activate this trait more than once before recharging. Feels like it should be a little smiley face there. Because it's pretty, pretty bloody nice. You've seen the amount of Might that can stack through that when I've just pressed 1. Uh, chill lasts longer and chilled foes deal less damage to you. If we're inflicting loads of chill, they're doing less damage to us. And also we're able to grant ourselves more might because they're still chilled for a longer period of time. Very good. And then finally, the end of this whole build really, chill deals damage over time. Base of 370. So, should we just quickly go through Reaper Shroud as well? Hopefully it won't run out too much. Second skill, blindness there. So slide forward, destroying projectiles in your path. Blind foes at the destination. The skill inherits traits from dark path. There you go. Blind, nice job as well. And we still got the first skill. Sorry, going off on one. Um, the third skill, like I showed you before, is the fear as well as the extra chill on the target as well. 
And the fourth skill is massive. You've got 12 stacks of poison, which are possible as well. If you hit them all off, that's a lot of poison damage. 1.2k there per tick almost as well. And then fifth skill, obviously, is going to be deliver a powered over... Let's just do the ability quickly. <laughs> so that I'm not going to be talking crap. But the nice chill comes off as well there. And it really slows down your enemy. It's a massive AoE circle as well. It's a really, really nice ability. So... A very very quick build video because I'm actually going to Leicester today to go and cast for the ESL uh, for Pro League or the start of the qualifiers so it's a very quick video today it's a fun little build that a lot of people are playing different variations of might stacking with Celestial and uh, might stacking with also Carrion or uh, some other condition amulets as well some power builds in this as well so really it's up to you but if you're going to go for the Deathly Chill then obviously you want to go with conditions to, to a degree um, and, it, and yeah, just a fun little build, so give it a bash, tell me what you reckon. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying it myself, and uh, I'm bringing a lot out of it. So quickly read the fifth skill as well, since I didn't deliver a powerful overhand strike to stun a single target, deals more damage to lower health than the target is, leaves behind a field of ice. So you can see the increasing damage on that as well. Which is always very nice. It might be nice as your good end combo to get that foe down when they're below that health threshold to get the maximum damage off. Otherwise, I've been Jebro. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and also click on the next screen so you can check out any other builds that I've done as well as subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much. At Jebdan is my Twitter. I'll see you very soon.